Hi, I'm so glad to see you guys. Uh, it's been quite a while since I do a live stream painting. I did a live stream on picking subject on a July 4th weekend, but in terms of a live stream painting, it's been a while, so I'm actually pretty excited about this. This is a relatively small paper, and as you can see, the subject is quite simple as well. So I'm hoping that this time we'll have like a truly simple subject and for us to to enjoy hello from egypt oh goodness 64 people already i'm so honored okay so i'm gonna i look like a tech support because i just got a new hopefully better mic so i'm gonna turn off my face so you guys can actually see the reference so this is going to be a relatively simple subject hi nuri it's your first. Oh, I'm so exciting to see all of you guys here. Okay, let's just get started. I am using my my Mozart uh, cold press paper, and next week, one of the Tip Tuesdays video, I'm going to share with you how do I change this. This was a pad to start off with, so all the pages are detached except this side. But I actually change it to make it glue on all four sides. So it is now fixed on the edges. So I can actually paint all the way to the edges without worrying about this is going to buckle too much. So hopefully next week's video is going to be helpful for you. I'm also sharing with you how do I flatten the painting afterwards. And it's not that difficult. I actually haven't tried do that for quite a while because I always been painting on blocks and the cases that I am not you know buckle paper actually doesn't really bother me as well so let's just get started enough talk so again a very simple subject and what I want to do for this one is to oh Ling Su Qing from Taipei good to see you Ni hao. okay so first thing I want to do is to maybe recompose this image a little bit. Miami is pretty late right now, isn't it? But so glad you're here. Again, for East Coast people, this might be a little bit late for you. I apologize for that. I just sent my kids to bed and I have to confess I kind of hurry them a little bit just so that I can start doing this. But it's okay, they're fine. Okay, so I moved the house a little bit more to the left just so that we can have a little bit better composition. The car, I like the car, but it's a little bit too far there. So I might move it in a little bit closer to the house if possible. Or maybe I'll park it in front of the house, but I don't want to make it too complicated because I do I do want this to be somewhat of a simple subject to paint on and this is a you know more of a more affordable paper even though I like this paper it is not Saunders or Baohong those kind of a paper that can take a lot of beading and you know, a lot of waters so I don't want to push it too hard okay so Okay. All right. So the car, the you know the big truck. I'm going to. So I'm just drawing some boxes right now. Again, very very light. So it might be a little bit hard for you to see, but that's you know that's the point. That's because I'm not committed to anything just yet. So now that I am a little bit more sure what I'm going to placement and the size I can start to draw a little bit harder and make some darker marks okay, okay here we go so the roof here okay. uh, the eye level this is pretty flat uh, it's a place near my 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 home actually so this is pretty flat so the eye level is going, I'm going to share the same eye level 
as this house, which means that there's no figure here, and I don't. I, I'm actually not planning to invent any figure here. But the window serves a good reference for the eye level, right? Because most of the window is at the eye level. If the window is above the eye level, you cannot look out. If the window's below eye level, that's you know that just doesn't look correct, right? You need to you need to duck and <laughs> crouch just to look at the window. So most of the window is right around where the eye level is. This is very, very important, okay? So don't just draw a window because, oh, there's a window there. Think about where the window is, right? This is architecturally making sense. So this is the horizon line where the window is, okay, right in the middle. So everything else, this sort of just follows the horizon line. The vanishing point, let's just assume somewhere down here. I'm just eyeballing most of it. I don't really need to be super accurate, just kind of need to loosely indicate. Things just need to make a little bit of sense, and that's about it. There's not a lot of perspective involved in this as well. There's a little bush here, and some other bush bushes here and so on and the truck let me zoom in a little bit here so the truck I parked the truck a little bit back here so that I can include that in my painting now the truck we can I actually need to move it up just a little bit because it is a truck so it is slightly higher than the person I assume I'm not an expert on truck but somewhere here okay it d doesn't have to be super accurate though it just it just need to look natural as all okay and uh, you know, i can do a little bit of shading it's going to be really black anyways okay see quite a bit of the back actually okay Good morning. Okay, Colorado, 10 p.m. There. Thanks for joining me. I love you guys. Just tell me where you guys are from. <laughs> it's almost like a you know, on on written rules of of live stream, people just starting to tell me where you're from, which is great. I love to know where you're from. It's just amazing that with the technology we have right now people from all over the world can join this live stream and i can get to share the process of painting i love how the internet bring us together well it also divide us a lot <laughs> if you look at any news and stuff but fortunately my channel is not about news political whatever all that stuff it's just about painting and sharing painting and me talking try to be relaxed so so hopefully that's a good use of the internet to bring people together just to enjoy art and painting okay from korea uh, how should I say? Anya sale, I think. <laughs> my Korean is a little bit rusty. Actually, no, my Korean is never good. I taught in uh, in this uh, Korean art school for high school students. They are some of the sweetest kids I I had. They're always like really respectful, and most of them work pretty hard. I said most of them. There's always some kids are scooping around, but they're kids, so okay. What good glue do I use for a sketchbook? I use matte medium. Again, I'm going to share that in my in my upcoming Tuesday video. It's all recorded. I just need to edit them together. I'm actually going to take a little trip 
next week just around the area not not you know not too far because it's still a little bit too risky to do that but i want to do that just so to have a little getaway actually let me actually erase some of this lines here okay so it's going to be a very simple painting so i'm not going to do a value study this time and i'm not going to pre-wet the paper i don't know how well this paper is going to hold if i actually pre-wet it but the sky i want to use the cerulean blue i'm almost out of cobalt i should have we feel that a little bit. Actually, let me do that now. I just got a new tube of cobalt blue here from Daniel Smith. And oh, you welcome, Pat. Okay. <coughs> so a little bit of cobalt blue and some cerulean blue from from mission this specific color is from mission gold it's not as granulated and the color is beautiful i love this color for the summer sky just i mean you can look at that just how beautiful that blue is it's vibrant and i add a little bit of cobalt blue just to just to neutralize it a little bit otherwise it might get a little bit too saturated okay so i'm going to just add a little bit of water here and, and here okay and reload my brush paint that in and it's going to blend it a little bit a little bit of soft edge here i want to hint a little bit of cloud but i don't i don't need it to be i, I don't need it to be very obvious uh, a little bit of just a little bit of warmer color okay okay so this is a cheap paper okay so i am just so this is more like a quick sketch but i do like this paper quite a bit for for some quick sketch value study cobalt turquoise hence the yellow deep if you've seen my last video you know what they're for some nice warm green Okay, and I just quickly get those in in my first wash. Okay, I'll add a little bit of cadmium yellow too. So first wash is the color of the light, always has been. So don't worry about detail and stuff doesn't matter just make sure you get the light down now is the light of the tree right so even though you see a lot of the dark in the tree we're not worrying about that right now so somebody asked what's my motivation of picking this uh, just that I like the lighting that's pretty much it and it's a simple enough subject that I saw it will be fun for me to do a live stream painting on. Okay. Now, I'll mix a little bit of, uh, oops. So like a warm gray, I'll say. I'll clean my brush through. Okay, so cobalt blue and a little bit of burnt umber you can add a little bit of yellow ochre actually so just a little bit of like a warm gray here so i'm just gonna paint it over here so the light the light area i'm actually gonna just leave it leave it white I 
grabbing a little bit of cool color and paint that underneath here. Yeah, like the light part of the house, I'm just going to leave it white uh, just to keep it simple. I mean, I could do a color on the light, but I think for this one, I want to keep it as simple as I can. Okay, so got a nice vibrant green. I love it. Couple turquoise, hence a yellow deep. Again, get that, get that nice summer grass under the sun. Get that color in. Okay. Okay, this is a Skoda Versatile uh, Synthetic Kolinsky brush. Okay, so there's a little road there. I mean, uh, I don't want to bother <laughs> actually this painting again. Just trying to stay relaxed and have fun with it. Okay. Yeah, my my way of mixing greens is just I need a little bigger brush. It's just tr I try to keep it simple. Use cobalt turquoise as a base, and I go warmer and cooler with that. Okay, and it's that easy. Okay, so well, so far it looks like the paper holds up because I glue on the side. So there's is a little bit of you know warping as to be expected no matter what you do but um, the paper itself is hold up quite well okay so this paper dries a little bit faster actually so there's not a lot of wet on to wet I can do which is fine I don't need to do a lot of wet on to wet Okay, so this is the, the first wash. I mean, I can paint some of the color in here, but I just want to keep it simple. So I'm just keeping it light, giving it white right now. Should a painting have only one or two objects for highlight and rest of it? Just, it, it depends. I, I don't think there's a hard set rules for know how to compose your picture I mean there's some guidelines rule of third things like that but in terms of the the subject itself what you pick it really depends on what you want to do and but if you are just you know still learning and just getting started my suggestion is to pick something simple you know as simple as you can and even when I'm pick picking this one, I'm going to simplify a couple things in here as well. Okay, so I am going to start painting the second wash. Okay, let me get rid of this weird color. I don't know why I mixed that. Okay, but the, for the rest of the color I can keep. I can keep mixing this green here. So the second wash, let me pre-mix a little bit of color actually. So the rooftop is a little bit warm, but also I see a little bit of purple in it. So what happened is it's probably a kind of a brownish, brownish roof color, a little bit of gray. But the sky is so blue, so the skyline makes it a little bit of purple-ish. Okay, so I think that's why we're seeing that color. Again, I, I, I kind of like to analyze what I'm looking at. Just so that it makes sense. So a little bit of blue. So, you know, this color looks somewhat matching. somewhat okay and then this that's probably the only color i really need to worry about okay and then again the house i might need to make another kind of this cool 
Actually, warm green. Not green, gray. Okay, so we have our base green here. So we need to add a little bit of darker color to start to change it to dark. So some more cobalt turquoise, burnt umber. Here we go. We got our darker green here. Okay. Darker green here. And I will add a little bit of blue on the side here. Okay. All right, so I think we're ready to go for the second wash. You know, if the color is not enough, I can mix it on the fly. Okay, so let's just start from the edges. So I might need to do a third wash because the color is not dark enough. I add a little bit of neutral tint. But Okay, let's see how far I can take just this brush. Okay, I just did a video about two weeks ago about the materials that I recommended for the beginner. But again, I said that in the video, those are the materials that I still use today. And I don't think we need a lot of material to make a decent painting. I don't want to say good because I don't want to <laughs> dig my own <laughs> grave if the painting doesn't turn out that good. But, you know, use it, use your materials, take it as far as you can. Okay, instead of constantly changing your brush and stuff, this brush is loaded with the color that I mix. If I keep changing the brush, I need to reload the brush, remix the color. That's just a pain. I don't want to do that. So, okay. Those evergreen trees, pine trees, things that Washington is known of, Pacific Northwest, the evergreen state. The tricky thing for the pine tree is the is their color actually is their value because their local colors are actually darker than most of the greeneries, so even in a sunny day it still look pretty dark. So so even though I st I left a little bit of highlights here and there, you know, I, most of it is going to be a little bit darker. Okay, so. There is a couple of pine trees in the back. I'm just going to use the same brush with the tip. See how thin of a mark I can actually make with this big brush. And okay, I got the trunk and a couple little stroke. And there we go. We got it. We got the tree in the distance. How about that? We don't need to change to a tiny little rigger. Make the most out of your material, I say. Okay, and we'll bring this down. Okay, I want some bigger shape. So little light bushes here, so I'll paint around it a little bit. But down here, we got some bushes, trees standing here on the grass. But again, connect the shape, okay, as much as you can. Connect, connect, connect. This is how you make a simple painting. How you make a loose painting is by connecting the shape. Let's see the original language. Yeah, I always try to mix my green because 
we're looking at natural green and we're using fake color. When I say fake color is that we're using, using artificial color, trying to mimic the nature. And nature is not a bunch of premixed color. This is not a paint by number. All right, so try to mix a little bit more color. Do it. Okay, so let's paint the roof color. Touch the tree is okay. I'll probably need to come back later and paint some darker shadow here. I want to leave a little bit of the gap here just to give the rooftop a little bit of thickness. But, you know, if it if you didn't do that, don't sweat it. Okay, so Okay, underneath this porch, there's some dark green here, okay. And that connects to, oh, sorry. So underneath this, there's a dark green in the back. And then I have that connect to the bush in the front. Okay, a little bit more color here. Okay, very simple. And I'll mix a little bit of the shadow color. Just a cool gray here. So a little bit more blue. And I'll just have that connect to the bush here. Okay. A little bit of, oops, a little bit of hints of dark down here. Okay. Okay, we're starting to see a little bit more light, which is great. Okay, I actually want to cut this wooden being out a little bit more. So it's a little bit thinner. Okay. Shadow casting by the roof, just paint it out, connect to the bush and whatever. This being itself actually has a little bit of value, so I'm just gonna paint that in. Okay, as long as your mixture is not too wet, not with you know without too much water, it should be okay. Okay, so let me push this contrast a little bit more by I'll add a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay, so I'm just gonna paint this. Okay, time to change a brush. I give up because I need some fine point here. So I am not going to paint too much detail on the window, but I do want to give it a little bit hints of a window frame here. Okay, down here, let me actually add a little bit of cool color just to make this a little bit more interesting. So it's not all warm gray here. Okay, a little bit of cool color and we got some light here from the bush, so not gonna bother with that, but now there's some darker green bushes here. 
those we do want to paint. Again, very simple. Okay, connect those shape. That's fine. Okay, move that camera a little bit. And I'm going to paint the car. I'm going to work on the car just a little bit. And we're not in our darkest value just yet. So uh, we don't need to worry about the wheel and stuff. But I can just kind of block it in real quick. Okay. And the dark side of the car is actually still pretty light. Just a little bit of cool color there. Okay. Things to know about a sunny day is that there's a lot of bounce light. And if it's a clear sky, then you're going to see quite a bit of skylight as well. Okay, so it's not just light, dark, and then that's it. Okay, you're going to see quite a bit of bounce light and skylight. Okay, uh, just some other color here okay let's take a little break from the detail and I'll paint some trees in the back here okay I'm actually going to pre-wet this just a little bit okay just pre-wet this just a little bit so I can add a little bit of transition tone into it. I'm adding a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. So it's still quite warm and quite, still quite warm, but it's just a tiny little bit darker so I can get a little bit of transition from light to medium tone light to kind of light medium and then I'm going to start to give it some dark tone here okay a little bit cooler here and just a little bit of wet onto wet so it gives us a nice transition from light to dark okay careful with the roof don't paint into it Try to, trying to concentrate and paint around some of the highlight that I want to preserve. Okay, so give this top a little bit of definition here couple stroke poking out okay. when it comes to the tree the silhouette plays a huge role so you don't need to paint every single leaf in here but definitely give it a little bit of care at its silhouette and It should do the trick. It will look like trees. There's a little bit of care on the silhouette. Okay. So I will need a third wash to really punch the contrast. Okay, but in terms of that. This is good as is. I'm going to paint a little bit of shadow here. The shadow, as you can see in the photo, is actually quite light. It's actually not that dark at all. So, because it still gets a lot of, it still gets a lot of the skylight there. Okay, so don't paint a huge dark shadow just because you see, you think it is shadow. So you start to mix a really dark color. Okay. 
is still getting light from the sky. Okay. And the shadow has a little bit of perspective too, even though there are different heights. You know, the trees are in a different height, but we are in a city, so the height difference is not going to be that dramatic. So give it a little bit of the per sense of perspective. Will also help to bring viewers' eyes in. A little bit cooler here. Okay. You need to mix the color rather quickly. This paper dries pretty fast. It's probably not a hundred percent cotton, so let's do that. The color does show up quite nicely, though, so I am no complaint. Okay, so look at that nice shadow going in to the distance like that, and then I actually want to have it connect to maybe a tree or something. So I bring this tree down just for composition sense. So we have this kind of connect to one of the tree and the tree connects to the house and so on. So we got a nice shape going down like so. A little bit of break here, but I think that's fine. It's not enough break to break viewer's eyes. Hi, Anders. Andres, okay. So we got our second wash. I'm gonna erase some of the pencil here. It's a little bit messy. Okay. Especially for the unpaint area, we can just erase those and uh, reveal some clean areas, which is kind of nice. We already started to see some light. How about that? I actually like it quite a bit. Now we just need to fill in the dark and we can call this painting done. It's quite easy. Just you know, follow the step, step by step. And let's see here. Okay. Now for this wash, we want to go in to the detail in the dark. So we need to use a little bit of neutral tint or cobalt black. Doesn't really matter. Cobalt black is a little bit more granulated. But I actually like things a little bit granulated in the in the dark, so it doesn't really matter here. So cobalt black, nice and dark, and I'll grab my cobalt turquoise, burnt umber. Uh, grab a little bit of cool color. So I'm mixing with quite a few colors, so I don't really have the hard set rules that you on, you can only mix with two color. This is, this is the dark color, so we can mix a bunch of color in. Doesn't really matter. Let me do a quick test here. Okay, I think that's nice and dark. Doesn't look muddy to me, so it's fine. All right, so I will just use this dark color and give it some nice dark value here. Okay, so I actually don't want to paint it all dark. I do want to preserve some light, so so just a couple areas. Um, I give it a little bit more leaves. So this tree probably in the foreground somewhere and the vine, the branch just kind of come in so I like that kind of again just bring the viewer's eyes back into the picture which is nice okay um, okay connect to that a little bit more cobalt black I want it to be a little bit more opaque okay so I like dark contrast of the house. Yeah, wait till I put the put the windows in. 
then it's going to look really nice okay so now we get to here this is where the magic is going to happen once i start to put this in a little bit carefully then the light of the house is going to to really bloom you're really going to see the light of the house once i put that dark right next to the house okay so this tree the dark of the tree is darker than the shadow of the house okay so that's something that we want to separate okay so look at that nice and dark right how about that and some dark here I am actually not quite sure what this house is. It looks like a residence in a residential area, but I think they're also selling golf ball or something. <laughs> I don't know what. Maybe there's like a home business here or something, because they always put out a sign and sign saying golf ball, and they and then they draw an arrow to the house. So I actually never been inside a house. Okay, so dark trees here. Okay, keep it simple. Okay, don't start to dabble your way because you see hundreds of leaves. Don't do that to yourself. We don't have all night. Okay, now back to the house here. Now let's paint, add some shadow. Okay, a little bit cooler. A little bit cooler. A little bit more purple-ish. Okay, I think that's that's fine. Now, there's a shadow here from, I don't know, maybe one of the tree on the side. I'm not quite sure, but there is a shadow here. And I want that to be in. Okay, it feels a little bit too watery, but I'm gonna just gonna go with it. Okay. Well, there is thin shadow here. And then I'm just gonna use my other brush and blend that to the tree in the background. I actually made this tree a tad taller. So that shadow connects to the tree in the background. Okay, let me move that up a little bit. And I think I'll add a little bit warm color. This side of this roof above the porch, I think is a little bit darker. So let's differentiate that a little bit. It's slightly lighter than the shadow, but we can just simplify that by, you know, making them the same value. Simplify, that's our job. Making the painting easier to read. And the shadow in here, a little bit darker as well. Okay, I shouldn't have added up stroke. Now it's a little bit too water. I'm going to pick that up. Okay. Okay, so where was I? Oh, house. Okay. So a little bit of detail here next to the roof and then I'm just picking up random dark color here now I I think I mix enough color here so underneath the roof here let's just give it a little bit of dark shadow it's kind of like an occlusion so it's already in the shadow but because there's roof here so even the skylight 
got blocked a little bit more. So that's how we start to have some really dark shadow up here and then it start to lift, become lighter again. So understanding the lighting and the physics of it will always help. Okay, so I'm going to paint the window. I don't mind it blending with the shadow here a little bit, you know, keeping it loose and and fun. This is the purpose of this painting. This is just a little bit of fun painting. Okay, there's three windows panels. I'm just gonna simplify this. Okay. Now it feels a little bit more complete. Okay, you have a nice dry brush and soften some of these edges. Yeah, I'm just gonna paint this over. Don't, don't need that additional details here. And make the base of the the bush flatter just so it feels like it's sitting on the ground sitting on the surface okay Let's wrap it up with the car here. Uh, I'm lazy. I'm just going to add some cobalt black to whatever pile it is and just paint that really dark color here. Okay, underneath the car, the front tire. From bumper, there's a window. Okay, just with the tip of my brush. Okay, get those in, and the back window, and add a little bit of blue, and let's just give it some shadow. Okay, it need to have a shadow, otherwise it's floating car. We are not at that time yet. Actually, I'm not sure if we will ever have a floating car because it's going to be chaos. <laughs> okay. Okay, a couple things that I want to do. Like this is a little bit too white. So I'm going to do a glaze over that. So it's not just pure white. I don't want that to compete with the light that we have here. Okay, and then I'm going to, the last thing I'm going to do is to add a little bit more dark over here, but the dark here is not as dark as this, I feel, and it's a little bit warmer, so I'm going to add a little bit more warm color here. I'm actually going to add a little bit of orange just for the sake of it. Okay, so so this painting, I pretty much just use two brushes. I use a bigger brush for the wash in the bottom, but it's just this brush and Perla. I don't know. The more I paint it, the <laughs> the more kind of minimalistic I feel I become. Just like. The, you know, the key I really want to do is just to make things simple. Simple for me, simple for you as well. I don't want to make things very complicated. That's why I always try to see if I can find the simplest approach and take the mystery out of, of watercolor. Is A lot of it is you spending time to get familiar with it and have fun with it, just do, 
to learn the property of it. But aside from that, you know, I don't want to give it such a big mystery over the whole thing. It's just spending time and understand how water behave and and make the most out of the material you have. And that's about it. Okay, I think that's I think this is pretty much it. Should I add anything? I actually don't think I, I should. I'll just keep it simple. So the this painting has two purposes, okay? Just to make a simple painting and the second is to test out how this work cuz I glue it on the side so paper doesn't really buckle. Right, nice and flat. Even though I do have some wet wash, I don't have huge watery wash, but it is behaving nicely. So before it's not glue. So if I paint it all the way to the edges, it's going to buckle and warp. So even if you don't paint all the way to the edges, it's still going to pull the fiber of the paper from the edge. So this actually performs quite well I'm quite happy with it okay, if I forgot a little window here let me actually paint those in yeah mm -hmm. like that little touch there okay um, I think that's it I feel like I want to darken the shadow a little bit, but I really don't want to overdo it. So maybe just a slightly tint of blue here and just push the light a little bit more. And just to make that sunlight feels a little bit brighter. But overall, I like Overall, I like the, the nice vibrant color. I feel like that's what I'm really looking at. And before, when I was really into Joseph's work, man, I'm still into his work, of course, but uh, his color palette is always a lot, of, a lot of gray, and that's what he's into, and I have nothing against that. But now I'm trying to be a little bit more saturated with my work just because there's a lot of beautiful colors in nature and and I think if I make everything gray kind of missing out on a lot of the the beauty that I'm I am seeing that's the, what draws me so I'm just giving this tree a little bit of definition. It was just like a soft edge. Feels that's a little bit too abstract. So Okay. Okay, we are done here. Okay, I hope you enjoy this painting. I certainly enjoy this little painting. It's nice and I don't know. Gives me joy. I sound, I sound, <laughs> I sound like Marine Kondo, but you know, sometimes little, simple painting like these with like everyday scenery and just paint those, and you know, like she says, kind of spark joys a little bit because like you're kind of just try to relax and do something simple and just simply try to enjoy. Of simple scenery like not a lot of a lot of time it's not up about painting huge sceneries cars and you know tents of figures just a just a tr just a you know house and a grass tree and that can be a good subject i mean if you look at this photo is i don't know it just speaks to me because i bike 
through this place quite a few times with my kid, and you know, this house always just kind of makes me feel kind of relaxing. You know, seeing that nice, beautiful, bright green in the summertime, and it just feels pretty nice. So. Very nice. Thank you guys for for being here with me in this live stream. Hopefully you enjoy that, and yeah, I will share my video next week about how do I how did I glue this on the side. It's actually really not that difficult. I'm just gonna share with you the process and how do I actually flatten the painting if I need to. So hopefully that will be hopefully that will be a useful tip for you okay uh i will put the reference photo okay Th this reference photo in the description down below so you can actually download it and and look at this painting and maybe follow along if you want to and just you know make your own version hopefully that will be fun for you okay uh after the live stream i might find a few areas that i want to touch up i think the bush here is a little bit messy i want to give it some dark so for them to kind of pop out a little bit more separate that was the house because they're darker value but i will wait till the live stream is over because i don't want to keep you here any longer okay